Welcome to the Women in Publishing Summit. I'm Alexa Bigworth, your host, and today we are talking to Think Epic. <laughs> it's so exciting. We are interviewing Miranda Levers, who is a Vancouver-based entrepreneur devoted to the intersection of small business and technology. As co-founder and COO of Think Epic, she's helped over 36,000 business owners earn 100 million plus with online courses over the last year alone, while educating millions of students around the globe. Prior to Thinkific, Miranda helped scale a team from 40 to 1,600 before jumping ship from corporate life, grew her own side hustle to seven figures, and earned her MBA just for fun. <laughs> yeah, because that's what people do just for fun. That's great. Some people. Some people. <laughs> She's an active writer, mentor for women in business, and a mom. So welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. I'm quite excited about this conversation. Yes, and thank you. Thank you to Thinkific for um, bringing, for coming along with us on this ride. It's been really great. I think that, um, well, I was so excited to offer the opportunity and for you guys to say yes, because courses have always been an important part of my um, outside revenue stream as a writer and publisher. And I think the the more we talk, the more people will understand um, that writing alone is a really hard way to make a living. And you have yeah. to have all these other, I think someone told me the other day, they rely on six revenue streams for a six figure income as, as a writer, which sounds daunting, but really there's, it's, it's not so bad once you get them in place. Um, you mentioned to me before we started recording that this is an exciting time for Thinkific because you all are doing some special themes, special things just for authors right now. So let's just dig right into that. What's going on and how can, um, how can authors make money through courses or through Thinkific or wherever you want to go with that? <laughs> Yeah, great. I'm excited to dive in. Yeah, we've got, we're, we're just working on some content right now. We wanted to really just focus on authors in particular who always have a little bit of a different um, need or, or uh, you know, the things that they're thinking about are, are a little bit different than maybe other types of entrepreneurs. So I know that our team is putting together a lot of content really specifically for authors right now uh, who are looking, as you mentioned, to monetize and add a revenue stream or even as ways, um, I also see authors using online courses as a way to start that two-way dialogue uh, with their existing or future readers because the other way uh, you know that it is when you're writing is oftentimes it almost feels like you're just speaking into a dark room and and you have sort of this one-way relationship with your readers where they might know you and they might follow you and they may feel like you know read all of your stuff but you're not hearing a lot back from them mm -hmm. um, so online courses can start to solve both of those problems which is you know help you monetize and give you an additional income stream for your writing business but can also help to create some of that community and the two-way conversation that ultimately makes us all better writers. That's such a good point. And I realized um, for anybody who is new to Thinkific, we should probably start with just a little bit of an explanation <laughs> of what Thinkific is before we start getting too much farther into how you can use it. That's fair. Um, that's fair. So <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I, I'm on first coffee. So that's I know. Me. Well, I was just so excited to charge in. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's okay. So Thinkific is an online course creation platform. It allows people to create, market, and sell their own courses and membership sites um, online under their own brands. And so some of the ways that we see authors specifically using it is to create, as I mentioned, that revenue stream, which is really about creating often next level content for their readers that come, um, you know, that comes at a bit of a price uh, as a way to create that revenue stream. And we also see authors using courses to build membership sites as they get more, um, more well known and start to build a bigger audience. And also a membership site is basically a portal where uh, you have a monthly subscription fee for people to become members. Um, there's generally a big community component and you're adding content on a regular basis, content or um, courses on a regular basis. And then the third uh, you know, thing that we often see is people creating free courses yeah. uh, as a way to start to build that list, build that community, and often to have that two-way uh, dialogue. Yeah, that's awesome. The membership portion, that's fairly new, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's something that we've always done, but we've been really building out new features and support within our platform to make Thinkific an even more robust membership site, for sure. Um, membership sites, we can definitely chat about them today. I'm excited to do that. But I always think of them as like, it's like level two. So like focus, like if you're, if you're brand new to online courses, you don't yet have an online course and maybe don't yet have um, a huge online contactable audience, like you don't have a huge email list. Uh, I usually don't recommend sort of diving in with the membership site. That's like, um, you know, that's like inviting 80 people over for a, a dinner party, like when maybe you should just have, you know, a small group of people <laughs> over first and, and get out some of the kinks. So I always say, start with the online course. Um, and then when you find that it's like, you know, you've got the hang of this, you've got people signing up, people are excited, people are excited about the next one, and you're starting to build that community, that's the time to then think about how you can turn that into an, an ongoing endeavor with something like a membership site. Yeah. So, um, Okay, so I'm just going to tell a couple of things of the way that I've used it, if that's okay with you. Yeah. Um, and Okay, so I started putting out some courses a few years ago, probably five or six years ago, as I was continuously getting the same questions over and over. How do you do this? How do you th- do that? And I started them, um, as you mentioned, as a, as a list, as an email list builder, because I think one of the things, whether you are new to publishing or a book or have been in it for a while, you'll realize how important that email list is when it yes. comes to selling your books and your products and services and all those types of things. So I did that same sort of thing. I started off just with a very small, like, I don't know, five day challenge or something like that, where I kind of walked them through some of the processes. I was using a different company at the time. And I met one of your colleagues, Catherine, at um, the Boss Mom Retreat in San Diego. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And I heard her talk about Thinkific. And I was kind of, you know, not real happy where I was. So I made the switch. And I've seen you guys grow tremendously since I came over with the capabilities and the tools. And one of the things that I really appreciate is all of the new. So they have like this built in like um, instructors along the way. So little templates to your courses and little things that'll say, here, you should do this. And to do, you know, have a great course build out, you should have this here and this here and this here. And it has all these little tips and resources throughout the way. So if you're thinking, I can't build a course, I have no idea how to do it. They make it so, 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 so easy. Um, I love the versatility. There's mini courses, there's bigger courses, there's your feature courses, or I don't think that's a word. I think you guys do call them something else, like your, your signature course or something like that. But the big one, the big, like yeah. the self-publishing academy um, is for us. And then you have um, the membership area. So um, I love it for authors who are trying to build their businesses in particular as an easy way to start is with that like three or four module, three to five module, just simple. Like, let me break down my knowledge for you in these little places. Yeah. Especially with the mini course. That's always, you know, I often have these conversations about exactly what you just said, which is where do I start? I don't even know where to start. Um, And everybody's mind immediately goes to the giant, whatever you want to call it, the big epic signature course. <laughs> right. and it's like the last possible thing that we should be thinking about. Because again, it's like, you know, when you decided that you wanted to take up being a bit of a foodie, you don't invite 80 people <laughs> over and like do the giant thing. Like just like maybe start with like some tapas in a movie. Like, you know, just like ease into it, get your feet wet um, and, and go that way. And the same is true for a course. So I encourage everybody, especially, I mean, it's such a natural fit with somebody who is writing or, or aiming to write for a living is to create a way to deliver content on an ongoing basis, mm-hmm. dip your foot in the water, um, and start to build out that community. And so I always recommend for people to really just start with the mini course and it doesn't, and I would actually say like make a free course. It doesn't need to like yeah. cost money, um, create the lead magnet course. So, and a lead magnet being is the thing that you're going to exchange, uh, for the coveted email address, which we all want to capture. Um, so that as you're writing and you're publishing and you've got your next piece of work and you're looking to market your book or whatever the situation is, is now you've got uh, a way to contact 
contact the people that have consumed your um, writing in the past. And so creating a mini course is really quite simple. Alexa set me up, set me up really well for that one. Um, Thinkific has a free plan to get started. So there's not even a, there's not even like a cash outlay at the very beginning. Our plans scale based on the features that you're using. But at the very, very simplest level, you can create a free, a free um, account on Thinkific. And we've got templates where you can literally just click on like the mini course template. And all, uh, all that is is really just about finding out, figuring out like what are like the few tidbits of information that you can give to solve a very small problem for your readers um, and package that up in a mini offering that is going to be compelling enough for somebody to be able to to be willing to exchange their email address for it. And it's as simple as that. Uh, and then that's the kind of thing that you can start to promote whether it's if you are publishing regularly, especially like if you're publishing online as well, um, you know, on your, you know, in your signature line, you can say like, hey, like want more or looking for like my tips on this. Um, you can send people there and you can start to capture that contact information. Um, anywhere that you are, you can, you can start to send people there so that you're getting that next contact point. And, and often we find that it just sort of spirals from there. So that's the, I, sometimes I refer to the mini course as the rip off the bandaid course, which is just <laughs> yeah. like, get it all out of your system, figure out, you know, what works, what doesn't, what you enjoy um, doing for content creation, how the whole thing sort of strings together and and then go from there. So, uh, you know, as things, as things grow, you can then start to think about, you know, how can you create a bigger course that you're starting to charge for, which is when you get into monetization. And like I said, and, and down the road is when you get into um, things like building out the membership site. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's really kind of interesting because when I first started, I also run a podcast and I also do like these, I've been doing these summits for four years now. So I have all these video presentations that are just incredible so information, <laughs> so much content. And I didn't exactly know what to do with them. So I started taking them and breaking them out by themes. Uh, for example, we talk about mindset a lot and mindset's such a big thing for authors. So I created a free course actually for anybody who didn't know me, didn't know anything about me and wasn't sure if they wanted to pay me yet. I just pulled some of the mindset um, pieces and put the videos into a Thinkific course and had a free mindset for authors course. Um, I did some, yeah, it, and, and that's so that's an easy way. If you do a podcast, the great thing is it doesn't have to be videos. You can do audio, you can do straight text, you can do a combination of straight text and video. You can embed videos from YouTube. So if you've got a YouTube channel going, I mean, take some of your most popular videos, pop them into a, pre I mean, it's, it's so, so, so easy to build a mini course, a free course, a free challenge, a free whatever to get people into your system. Now, what I really love are um, bundles. I love mm -hmm. the bundles because you can create, so the bundle, you, you can grab different courses and offer them all for one price all together. One of the people often ask me, like, what are some of the biggest mistakes I see when people are diving into online courses? And probably the single biggest mistake is really just this, you know, this idea that you have to build the giant signature um, massive course before you get started. And, and nothing causes me more pain than, you know, like looking at, you know, data and seeing, you know, people who have signed up, they've been in the app like hundreds of times and they've, they haven't actually gotten any enrollments. And when I look at it, it's like, oh no, because they're building out this giant crazy course. Nice. And uh, the best thing that you can do is just to, you know, rip off the bandaid and get started a lot earlier than that. So start with the mini course. If you are building out the big course, we're like do it one chapter at a time and release them one chapter at a time, whether it's free or a combination of free and paid content, and then just bundle it all together as opposed to kind of going into a hole and just um, creating the whole thing. I know sometimes as if people are, write, are used to writing books, that's kind of the way that you write the book, right? Is like you kind of disappear into a hole and then you come out with an entire book, but do not do your online course that way. Um, so you want to, you know, release content as you go. And it also allows you to workshop content as you go. So, um, a, you know, a good friend of mine, Kim Worker, I was chatting with her about, she's a writer, she's written a lot of um, nonfiction, and she talked about this idea that uh, having her online course allowed her to have that two-way dialogue and get feedback mm -hmm. um, for what she was doing, because she's ultimately teaching uh, via, you know, written word. And if you don't, 
explore that two-way dialogue and get the feedback from the people who are going to ultimately be learning from you, it's really difficult to anticipate. Like, are you like, what do you, what do they need? Like, are you really hitting off all the, you know, the questions that they have in their mind? And by having um, a way to to do that in a more interactive form, it allows her to workshop uh, some of her work before she commits it to uh, yes. the written book. Yes. Oh, well, I actually talked with somebody the other day who's going to do that. She originally thought she would write the book first, but as we were talking about, um, she has all this content. And as we were talking about um, how to do it, we decided that a course first, book second would be the best way to go for ex the exact same reason, because she could go, she has like two or three different audiences and she could go with either one of those. And I said, I think you should same conversation, start the course, work through the course, see what people are liking, see what they want more, and then write the book from that. So you can go both ways. Um, you know, let's, in, in case someone's sitting here thinking, okay, I understand this, this would be a great way to build my email list or even to start making a little bit of money. And let's not forget that it costs a lot of money to publish a book well. Um, you know, that might be 10,000 for some people, 25,000 for some people or 2000 for somebody else, but depending on, you know, it could cost a lot of money. So um, having things in place that are already getting you some income while you're writing that book is a great way to do it. So what are some, uh, if, if you want, or we can just talk back and forth about some of the different ways that um, some of the types of products that people could create types of courses, types of content, um, is that something you want, you want to talk yeah, about from, for, yeah. from what you've seen that's been really successful? Yeah. Um, one thing, actually, a little bit of a tangential thought, only before I forget it, because I actually think that this is a bit relevant. So you talked about um, taking existing content like podcast content or other content that you've already created and turning that into a book. And we can definitely like dive into that. But all of those things often tend to really apply to the nonfiction writers. So the people that are teaching. Um, and, I, and I was talking to somebody recently uh, who is a fiction writer and they had a really cool take on their online course that it just like, it's not even something that had occurred to me and I just wanted to share it with your audience in case yes. you do have any of those fiction writers yes, who are sort of thinking, it's like, well, I don't have that kind of content and I don't have content that I want to workshop and so on and so forth. But I was chatting with somebody who's actually using, they created an online course, which was like, like the book club kit for their fiction book. Oh. So then basically the idea of course being is that if book clubs are picking up your book and reading it, um, being able to create content that helps enrich their book club experience. So um, a little bit more backstory, some like challenge questions for discussion and some fun stuff like that. And I thought that that was just a really neat take on a way to list build as a, uh, as a fiction writer using an online course. And so it was kind of one of those little freebies. Uh, and then she was actually sort of mentioning it and referring to it right in the book itself. So people who were reading her book um, were then sort of prompted uh, in a really real way to go and give their email address and get onto her list to get this book club content. So I thought that was kind of cool. That is a great idea. We were talking about some ideas for fiction authors, actually, because we do have quite a few fiction authors. Um, and I, I, we were talking about a lot of fiction writers go on to teach writing as well. Like people will come to them and ask them to mentor them through the process. So it's a really good way for, for you sure. to, um, even if they're just free courses to list build again, Okay, so now back to your actual question. Yes, back to around it. how to break down content, how to create courses that um, that sell and that work, and especially when you start to think about getting into monetization and like what actually works. And um, and again, so this is one of those things where when you know when people ask me like what are what are some of the pitfalls, and I sort of mentioned the big course, uh, but oftentimes when people start to think about courses, we think about our own experience with education and we think about like university. And in university, you take the like writing 101, everything you need to know about writing or, you know, right, what, right. just humor me. But that's the kind of course that you take in university. And when you're enrolling in a course like that, you are generally trying to get to a degree. You're not even necessarily like, it, it's not like you're trying to solve a very specific problem and you're trying to gather more general, um, broader knowledge. But completely the opposite is true in the online course world. So um, almost without fail, when people are enrolling as a student in an online course, and especially when they're investing, so especially when they're going to pay for an online course, it's because they have a very real tangible problem um, that they are experiencing right now and they're willing to pay money to fix it and that's never 
pretty much never. Um, I just want to have a bunch of extra sort of like writing knowledge. Okay. It's more like I'm really struggling writing um, a title or I'm really struggling, um, you know, planning out whatever the case may be. Like it's, it's something very, very tangible to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's, that they're looking, they're going to be more likely to take the course that is, you know, how to, how to break down your podcast content and turn it into uh, your first published book in 30 days. Like that's where it's like, oh, hey, I'm trying to break down my podcast content and turn it into a book in 30 days. Sounds great. And when you can get that specific, um, you're going to be way more likely to be able to identify the people that your book, uh, or sorry, your course, now I've got the wrong terminology, that your course is right for uh, and connect with those people and actually get them to, um, to buy your course. And so that's always the first thing is, is try to get really very specific about who are you creating that particular course or piece of content for? Um, what problem do they have? And is it something that is burning enough that they're going to be willing to pay money to fix it? Yes. Well, I'll give a great example of that if you don't mind me jumping Yeah, please. In. I was just going to ask if you had one or how you did yes. yours. From a consumer standpoint, I could talk about my courses all day long, but I'll give a consumer. <laughs> um, we, we, um, we started publishing children's books under Purple Butterfly Press, our second imprint, about a year ago now. And um, I was very familiar with laying out adult books, you know, but a children's book was a completely new endeavor for me. So I started looking for layout artists and, and graphic designers that were more specific to children's books. And I also was looking to learn the skill myself because it can get really, really expensive and it's good to, to know to know that stuff. So I started searching for how to, how to do the layout for a children's book. And I did find, it was a very specific, very short, like four module course specific to how to lay out a children's book, a couple of videos, a couple of screenshots, a couple of this and that, that laid out like exactly what you needed to do in InDesign. So it brought it even more specific if you're using yeah. InDesign to be able to do it. And it was perfect. I'm on this woman's list now. Um, you know, I got what I needed from the course. It was a great experience. And if she publishes something else in the future, I'll probably be likely to either recommend it to my customers or, or, um, or go to it myself. So it was fantastic. She took her, uh, her sphere of knowledge based on the book that she had put together and created yeah. a very short course. It was wonderful. Perfect. And then you can sort of extrapolate from her end where, you know, that might be one very small piece of information. She might be selling that as sort of like the mini course. And then ultimately, if she's writing the book on how to write and publish children's courses, that's probably just one chapter out of, you know, whatever, 20 chapters that she ultimately puts into the big book. But it allowed her then to create and deliver and get out there that one piece of content connecting with people like you who really just needed to read it, um, probably get some feedback and then be able to uh, improve that before she puts it together with the bigger um, piece of work. Absolutely. And I'd say if you're, it doesn't matter what you're writing about, somebody in your sphere of influence is going to see that you are writing a book and they're going to start asking you questions. So <laughs> I would just start jotting down the questions that you get on a regular basis and then you can film, you type up answers and put them in there or film something if you're comfortable on film. But um, nonfiction authors, I think, just have such an easy an easy road when it comes to building a course because you're writing a book that's already teaching something. Yeah. So then it's just a matter of picking for the mini course, you know, obviously if you have a big chapter, let's say you do a, a food, a food, how to get healthy, how to eat healthier or something like that. You know, I mean, you, each one of those chapters could be an entire mini course or they could be modules in a course or however you wanted to do it. I mean, just, just meal planning alone, if that's part of it, could be an entire massive course, you know, for yeah. people. So you guys, I mean, you have really, really expanded with it with all these, you said a hundred, a hundred million dollars plus with online courses. So I would say if, we could maybe shift gears a little bit now to mm -hmm. instead of what type of content, like what are the best ways to um, make money from the content, to market it, to get it out in front of people? What have been some of the most successful things you have seen people do? 
Yeah. Yeah. Going a little bit back. So I sort of mentioned that, you know, even when you're thinking about the mini courses, that the biggest thing that you need to think about is how do you identify a specific person who has a specific pain that is willing to pay money to solve that pain or, or, or get a solution to that problem. And I actually say that the same thing is that the root and the core of being able to monetize and do well with online courses, mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, um, you can have an entire marketing team behind you. But if you don't have a course that really speaks to a very specific person with a very specific problem, um, you can market till the cows come home and you're never going to be able to sell that course. So it's really about making that connection between who needs this and who is willing to um, pay to solve this very burning problem for that person, as opposed to just like, what are the, you know, what are the marketing tactics that you, uh, that you should employ? And once you have that, so once you, you know, so once you've got, uh, you've got your specific topic, you've got your title that really speaks to that person. I always, I just start there. And so I start, you know, as close to the problem as possible, which is, okay, so I know who this is for. I've got some sort of evidence that these people are out there willing to pay money to fix it. And I love that you mentioned thinking about what questions are you getting asked all the time and that's like one of the very um best ways especially uh, as somebody like an author you're getting you could write a course on like a hundred different topics but trying to figure out what are you going to create the course on even if you're writing a book is think about those burning questions like what are you asked for most often what are people emailing you about you know at the end like you know when you're out or speaking or whatever and people are, are having that conversation on the street what is the most pressing um question that you're hearing from your audience and that's a really good clue that that's a great place to start with uh, with your course topic because if you have match there, then you like that's good evidence that people are really eager for that particular information. And once you have that, then you uh, everything else starts to fall into place. And so what I mean by that is the first thing that you need to do. So now you've got like the title of your course um, is going at the top of your landing page. And then the next thing you need to do is you need to think about what are people getting when they hit that landing page? Like what else is on the page? And my favorite thing to do is to create copy based on the language that people um, who might take the course are actually using themselves. So rather than sitting down and just writing, um, you know, like what I think that it should go on the page, I love going back to, you know, the emails that I've gotten from people um, and start to like and mine that for copy and use the language that those people are using. And so um, I was reminded recently, so early days of Thinkific when uh, when I was wearing, well, I still wear a lot of hats, but you know, like when I was also the only copywriter, um, <laughs> I, uh, I was doing a bunch of research in terms of how our customers were speaking about online courses and how the people who were in our audience were talking and, and, you know, discovered that a lot of people were using the term e-course, but at the time we were never using the term e-course, but it's those kinds of things where it's like, Oh, right. Yeah. Like, you know, there's this whole community of people who are referring to e-courses. And so even though that wasn't a term that we had used, started using that term and especially marketing to those communities that I knew were, were frequently using that term. And you can do the same thing with your course. So go back to the emails that you're getting, or even if there are other pieces of content out there on, um, on this particular topic, I love going and reading like Amazon reviews for books yeah. about the thing I'm going to write. And I just like read the reviews, mining it for copies. So how are people referring to it? What are they seeing? What are they saying that they learned from this piece of content, that kind of thing, and basically echo that language back to them on that landing page. So I really try to put a lot of focus and conveniently we're all writers. <laughs> so um, this should be our forte, but, uh, but wanting to make sure that when that right person hits that landing page that they're seeing a topic that resonates with a problem that they have that they're willing to pay money to fix and language and copy that they could have said themselves and it, yeah. it really just sort of like it feels right to them because it's like oh hey yeah I do have that problem and yeah like that is how I think about this so I always start there once you have that, um, it becomes a little bit easier when you are very particular uh, thinking about where to go next. And so my favorite thing to do next is really to go into the communities that have this problem. And so one of the examples that I like using, which is just kind of fun, um, is around, you know, the marketing world. And so you can create again, going back to like, you know, there's like the marketing 101 class or even digital marketing 101. And nobody's going to take that because there are a million (laughs) marketing classes. But if you create the marketing class, which is like, like, marketing class for gigging musicians who just want to sell more swag at their shows. It's like, okay, great. Now you know exactly who you're talking to. You know who exactly like is your right target market. And then all of a sudden when you are that specific, you even know where to go. I know that I'm not going to just try to like blast 
every, you know, community online with my course. It's like, no, I'm going to go to the, like, the, not just the like musician forums, but I'm going to look for the business forum within the, you know, within the musician communities and whether those communities are on Facebook or um, I don't know that LinkedIn is the place for musicians, but you get my point <laughs> in various <laughs> other online forums, but go find the communities where those people are hanging out. And that's a really good place to then start, you know, sharing your free content. Definitely don't run into a community and be a new member and start sharing paid content. You'll get booted real fast, but go right. join the community and start to communicate um, with that group of people start to add value uh, and it often naturally it just sort of naturally works and you know you can join the community you start talking to people you share your free content you give a lot of value and then you can expand from there and by all means you know you can uh, you can do Facebook lives, you can build your social following, you can figure out the hashtags that that community is using so that when you are, are Instagramming content that you're getting in front of the right people. But at the root of all of that is knowing really clearly who you're for, who your people are, um, such that when that gigging musician who just needs to make a few dollars selling his swag sees your course, it's, it's a no brainer for that person to then buy it. And by the way, everything she just said is like marketing 101 for selling books too. I mean, that's such great advice. I love the idea of going to reviews and pulling the things that people said about the things they like. I go to reviews a lot to see what people didn't like so that I can know what's missing from mm -hmm. a book um, because they'll often say that too, but I'd never, I never really thought about pulling that for copy. Obviously, yeah. you're not going to copy and paste exactly what people say, but... <laughs> Just no, but just like that. you get the tone and it's so right, it's exactly. like, yeah, that's my favorite thing. It's so funny because I don't, uh, you know, I don't, I don't identify as a copywriter. Actually, like, you know, it's like one of those things where it's like, I can do copywriting, but I'm very slow at it. But uh -huh. the reason being is I just spend so much time researching and I just love those little tidbits. It's like, cause you yeah. can pull so much out of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and I think it's really important to realize both as writers and by someone building a course is that sometimes things are like just absolutely clear to us and our minds on what we're trying to say. And it really isn't to other people. And I'll give you a great example. I thought that it was very clear to say it was an online conference and that, that this, this conference, mm -hmm. the women in publishing summit, I thought that was very clear. And that's where I ended it. It's an online conference running from March four to eighth. We are getting question after question about like, what does that mean? When is it running? When can you, and I had to step back and say, you know, I, I didn't think about that to me when I hear online, I just assume that it's going to be available all the time in that time frame or whatever. So just as an example, like, so we, you know, if things are super, super clear to you, it's good to test that content on other people too, to make sure um, that it's really clear. Yeah. When you're writing the copy, because those, those key front pages, especially not so much for free, although I've seen people get really, really um, interesting over free things as well, but especially when somebody's paying, like it has to be super, super clear what they are paying for, what they're getting from it, what they're mm -hmm. going to achieve at the end, you know, all those kinds of things. So knowing the pain point, that's actually something one of my mentors taught me a long time ago. That's one of the smartest thing I ever heard is that they have a pain point. Figure it out. Whoops. Figure <laughs> it out how to solve it. And 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 they will be yours. <laughs> you and then make sure that you communicate to them that you are going to help them solve it and it all clicks together. Exactly. That's so great. Um, okay. So when someone sets up their course on Thinkific, um, yeah. first of all, I want to let everybody know that Thinkific has generously donated a month free to all of our participants. So if you want to go play on the platform and figure it out and see what's going on, you just head over to womeninpublishingsummit.com forward slash Thinkific. And it comes along with about $900 worth of free training. So if you have any question on how to do any of those things, you can check that out there. But, um, okay, so you go in, you create the course, you put it out there. Does Thinkific have resources to help you market your course? We've got a lot of education that gives you lots of different tips, tricks, ideas. I think we one of our most popular blog posts is a 50, 55 ways to market your online course. Awesome. Um, and that's not to overwhelm you, but more just to help <laughs> you find uh, the right ways for you. So, yeah, we've got lots and lots of different education resources uh, to dive into once you're at that point. Absolutely. 
All right. Is there anything else then in speaking to authors that you would really want to make sure that we highlight? Yeah, I think that the biggest thing with authors specifically that I see is like, again, talking about some of those pitfalls that people fall into and the idea that um, if you kind of go into a bit of a hole and and spend too much time creating before you just rip off the bandaid and get something out of there is particularly an issue with people who are used to writing long form yeah. Um, works. So I think people who are used to, who are authors who are mostly publishing online are used to creating, you know, the short articles and getting stuff out. And I think that those people can really resonate with the idea of the mini course. Mm -hmm. But I know that people who are writing books um, often are not working in that kind of cadence. And so I think that that's one of the biggest mind shifts that I can really encourage people to try to just rip off the bandaid, get out the mini course, put out the small piece of content, because it's not like writing another book. And I think the worst thing that can happen is for people to sort of see it as this other big behemoth that they have to, you know, now do and, and build as opposed to turning it into something that is a natural part of their flow and their workflow. Um, because I think you can do it in a pretty low touch way. And I encourage people to do that as opposed to um, turning it into a great big thing that is now a whole other uh, beast that they need to nurture. Yeah. So one of the questions that I hear a lot is how much do you put into your book if you have a course and vice versa? Like, do you go all the way in both places? Do you scale back in one area? And, you know, if you have a book and then say, go buy my course that has really details, or do you recommend a variety of these things? Yeah, I would actually say that think about the specific um what are you trying to accomplish with your course at that particular time? And also recognize that a course can like be taken down. So a book can't be unpublished. You know, it's like kind of once it's out there, it's out there, but a course can go up for a time and then come down. So I've also seen authors, for example, who are using a course to get out. Um, so chapter by chapter kind of content and they want to workshop their content. But then as they get close to actually completing the book, they'll just take all of those mini courses down. So then you can't access them anymore. And so that can be a really good way where they, you know, are prompted to, put out content, they're getting some feedback, they're getting people in there. But ultimately, you know, like when they have 20 of them, they're going to just bundle that up and actually write the finished book. They'll then unpublish those, um, those mini courses. So they're no longer available as a free course, and then it comes out as a book. Mm -hmm. uh, so that can work out really well. And then from a, um, from a perspective of the next one, I, I really love doing the like deeper content as an online course. So nothing is worse, whether it is, whether it is reading a really great article or a book, or even going in and hearing somebody speak about a topic that you're excited about and passionate about and really interested in. And then like, it's at, like, you're at the end of the, you know, the article, the book or the, or the talk, and there's nowhere to go next. And you're kind of just like left. And it's like, Oh, like, but like, I was really into that. I want to know more. I want to know yeah. more from you. I want to know your thoughts. And so that can be a really good time to be like, Hey, like if you want to continue this sort of virtual conversation, or, or get kind of like a little bit of the next, a little bit more, like a little bit of the next steps um, to have the online course that is the continuation of that. Yeah. And then, and that could be a really good way to capture that, you know, that customer's contact information at that point. And then you can sort of extrapolate because then that might actually just be like the seed of the next book. So then maybe right. you like push people there, you build out that content, then you take it offline and you just release it as a book. So I think that the two can work together quite nicely other thing that I have found, this is a completely different type of example, but as we were talking about building the email list, one of the things that I've found incredibly, incredibly beneficial to my platform building over the last year, which we've talked so much about platform building, we will talk about platform building so much throughout this um, conference, because it's so important if you want to actually sell your book and course to have people to sell it to. But mm -hmm. I have um, co-authored books and partnered with other people in the writing industry. And um, I've taken some of my smaller free courses and I've used them as a bonus as we've come together. Um, but often you'll have people do like launches of different products and they want a bunch of bonuses and want a, bun a bunch of extra added value. So I gave my free course as one of those things. And I mean, thousands, thousands of people what a great way to grow your list. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So um, keep those ideas in mind. If you're panicking, I mean, there's so many simple, simple, simple ways to, to do it. Um, okay. Again, I just want to remind people to go to womeninpublishingsummit.com forward slash thinkific. And if nothing else, take advantage of that free 30 days and all of that training. And thinkific has been very generous to offer two pro plans, two annual passes to the pro plan to two lucky winners 
of our All Access Pass members. Do you want to talk a little bit of difference in their plans? Yeah, sort of the only thing you need to know is it's just, it's really just feature-based. So like I said, is we've got a free plan to get started. Um, it's kind of bare bones, but it's, it's what you need to just be able to get a course up and to sell it. Um, and then as you start to um, have more, you know, have more students or you're ready to launch, you can jump onto our paid plans that just give you more features. That's where you get into things like subscription pricing or custom domains. Um, we, as you get bigger, we've got, you know, group features and all sorts of, of fun stuff there. Uh, but it really just depends on, on um, what you need as you grow. Uh, yeah. And it's built in such a way that you can get started quite easily. Well, I really love that because, you know, most authors are bootstrapping a lot of their efforts. So to be able to start to start free and to, um, you know, get your feet wet and get organized before you move on up is so fantastic. And just so people know, the free 30 day trial is to the pro plan. So there's a yes. whole lot more bells and whistles. Yeah. Added on yeah, and you that. mentioned there's tons of there's tons of education resources. So even if after this you're like, okay, like I'm bought in, but I still have no idea where to start, um, we cover you off. So we've got lots of really great um, education that comes along with that bonus bundle uh, that will walk you through um, what to do, where to click, and and all that kind of stuff. We've got some good content in there, uh, and our team is really accessible as well. So don't let fear of that technology um, get in your way. Just dive in and and give it a go. Yeah. It's such a great way to diversify your income stream. And again, I know we started talking about this and I'll end talking about this too. And that is that, um, you know, it, it's hard. I, I, people will often ask, how much money am I going to make from book sales? And the reality is it's really hard to make a lot of money from book sales, but it's not so hard to make money from all these other sources of income that you can do like building a course. And the wonderful thing about courses is that it's a heck of a lot of work the first time you build it, but then it's there and it's, people buy it over and over, and over and over. Like you could yes. keep selling it over and over and over again yes. and you own it. So it's on your platform. Yes. It's on your site. You own it. You're not reliant on, um, you know, whatever Facebook is thinking right now or whatever anybody else is thinking right now, you own it. It's yours. So yeah. Yes. It's so great. Well, again, thank you so much to you, Miranda. Thank you so much to Thinkific and, um, I just, I'm so grateful to you and uh, go start building your courses, people. <laughs> Yeah, this was so much fun. I can't wait to see um, what people do and to hear about all of the great courses that um, the authors listening today uh, build in the future.